Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings again, my friends. I'm going to be talking about a horror sci-fi movie called Event Horizon. This is a favorite of mine. Uh, came out in 1997, directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. I think that's the Resident Evil guy. He's made like six Resident Evil movies. Although this might be my favorite movie of his. I have a guilty pleasure with the Resident Evil movies, but they're not um, they're not the best uh, movies to be made. Enjoyable for me, but Event Horizon. Uh, it was just at the brink of great special effects, but still having to rely on practical effects. It's a great story for me. It's a crew of astronauts sent on a so-called rescue mission. Uh, I guess in the, in the history of the show, of the movie... They lie to the public and say the Event Horizon, that's the name of the ship, uh, had a critical engine problem uh, and exploded. But what really happened, you find out, is that the ship had an experimental uh, gravity drive. And it was supposed to bend time and space and go from one point to another. And on its maiden voyage, it disappeared as soon as it engaged the drive. Uh, seven years later, I believe, they get a distress signal in uh, the orbit of Neptune, like a decaying orbit. And our actor from Jurassic Park, who built it, Sam Neill, is sent to a ship called the Lewis and Clark, and they're going to go and rescue the ship, or investigate. The crew is captained by Loris Finchburn. And has a great cast. They're all uh, believable. And give credit to the writing and the director. It feels real. Uh, you could imagine this is okay. This is our future. In the uh, in the way things look lived in. Uh, Alien did it great. Um, like the Millennium Falcon Star Wars. You get the feeling that these are real people with real jobs, and it has to do with space travel. And the Lewis and Clark is, a, or I think, a rescue ship, and they even mention the last time ships came out this far, we lost both of them. It wasn't a successful rescue mission. And there's a little bit of uh, interaction in the beginning that's really telling, really uh, done well. And it goes to shit eventually. I get a kick out of this movie. I love it. I watch it a lot. It's one of the movies that's in my wheelhouse every every year or so, especially, I guess, around Halloween. It's got some great use of horror that is overused these days with the cuts and flashes and bangs. And this movie did it right. Now, there's going to be a couple of... Um, Moments where you notice the it didn't have the technology and the special effects we need we have now, so that's one slight thing. And the way it's edited, I could see being neutral. I could see the way it was put out there. It could be a little off-putting to some people, but I really enjoy it. The horror at times is in your face when it needs to be. Gory, but not insane. We're not there long enough. There's this growing tension and mounting between the characters on the ship. Obviously, Sam Neill is an outsider coming onto the ship. Lars Fishburne, you can tell his, uh, his interactions with his crew is uh, something you feel is believable. And he even says to, I think it's a medical technician, he tried to get a replacement because she's having problems with her uh, disabled son. And it was an emergency call. I guess this was the top secret P-51 
people behind the scenes sent Sam Neill like, oh, let's go find out what happened to our gravity drive. And these everyday working uh, blue collar, get your hands dirty people have to go out and ferry this doctor scientist to figure out what happened. And as soon as you get to see the event horizon, because the Lewis and Clark comes on it, they have to go into the atmosphere. There's lots of turbulence and they have to really put the brakes on and a really great scene directed. Well shot. I love the visuals. The, like I said, there was a part here and there where you go, okay, you know what? It's like watching Terminator. I love Terminator. The first one It's such a great movie. When you look back at it and watch it, you're a little drawn out by how rubber things look. And if someone went back and did the George Lucas touch-ups, you'd make Terminator uh, uh, an even more amazing movie. Same thing here. Although, I don't think it's as obvious here. And some of the... Some of the... Well, each person's fears are like kind of uh, amped up. And is a tried and true story of horror in a sense where I guess you could I remember it more from like boats so there's a boat out in the ocean and it's been possessed in a way it has a life of its own and they gotta investigate there's a couple of movies that are coming to my mind one is with like um um the actress from uh Halloween Jamie Lee Curtis I think it was like a virus or technology or X-Files did episodes like this so you have a space station that is slowly revealed to be, in a sense, alive. And they want to know, where did it go? Where has it been for seven years? And that's the revelation. There's a garbled message from the crew, because they can't find any of the crew. There's one part where arm is floating, and I can't tell if it's an arm from a suit, like a space suit, or it's a seven arm. Because there's nothing really there. When they get there, it looks like... I think one of them makes a remark that it looks like it was never used. So, they get to the event horizon. They uh, board it with a certain amount of people. Check everything out. They get a couple of messages and they're trying to fix it or clean it up. And they think it says, save us. And there's a little bit of a twist to that. It's revealed later. But it generates a mounting anxiety, a, uh, a terror in a way. I could see it as like being trapped underwater or in a submarine or uh, underwater installation. You're out in space. You're in a ship. Like, where do you go? There's no... It's just. I guess it's that instinct for me to just want to be in the woods or run or... Well, I live in uh, Brooklyn, but in a sense, it adds to everything. The Event Horizon is a massive ship. They have to go on to that ship because their ship is messed up, the Lewis and Clark, and someone like, stays behind to fix it. They got to repressurize it. And the pacing for me is great. Everything works for me. Now, stepping back and trying to look you know, critically, I don't see that many flaws, although I there are some, and maybe a couple of all have to do with special effects or technology. There's one or two characters that are a little bit, um, not you know that they don't pull it off. They're not so believable in certain aspects, but not all the time. It's not like something that ruins it. All in all, I give this movie uh, a big recommendation, especially if you're into horror sci-fi horror they just use it right they use the ship right they got the crew right the dialogue seems on point um Lawrence Fishburne in his um prime I guess you could say is the captain and you get his crew and each one is you know distinct enough and they have the right scene set up Everything works for me, and I think it'll work for most people. It's something I would easily recommend. There is a point to the horror, though, that can get to people. It, it can be vivid, very to the point, and I could see people being turned off by it. But I don't believe it's done 
the way it's done shitty these days where it's just to be gratuitous just to throw it in your face and have blood for the sake of blood or i mean i guess i like a little bit more superstition or supernatural to my horror even if it's sci-fi rather than um okay let's say the chainsaw massacre type movies or hostile where it's normal people i mean there's almost so much when you watch someone get their leg cut off or their arms or whatever cut open this type of horror is a great builder and you don't really know what's going on at first you're not sure if there's a crew member lurking around and the first person who gets in trouble is one of the innocent i think uh his nickname is like baby bear he's like a young actor guy i think he's the technician on the ship and he's the first one who gets in trouble they rescue him and from there it just builds up slowly it's the fears within us the dark within us the ship seems to know it it knows your secrets as Lars Fishburne says in one of the parts of the movie and it's a great ride I think it's paced well it's got a satisfying ending and it's got good payoffs and you don't expect certain aspect of uh, the actors and characters to be portrayed in a way so it's a little refreshing but i guess maybe in fucking 1997 looking back it's a, it was always a little different but i recommend this movie a lot i think the logo the slogan is infinite space infinite terror it's got a great feel you can watch it over and over you like you can pick things out here and there when you watch it again and that's a really important thing for me. I tend to watch my favorite to stop over and over. I guess I guess everybody does it. But Event Horizon, wow. Great horror movie, sci-fi. It's got a really good feel. Uh, I'll say it again, like the believability of a, a crew and, a, and their job in space. I think there's a TV show called The Expanse that does it pretty well now. You know, livable breathable uh dirty gritty type atmosphere and it pulls that off remarkably i think it does it really good and like i said you got a couple of little nitpicks about the movie fine it does not tarnish it in my opinion although i want to be at least uh honest and say i can respect people who go oh, no you know i watched that movie i just shut it you know just shut it off or it's um gets too disturbing for me Okay, there were a little bit of uh, themes that are drawn out of people. There were, uh, but for me, it's crazy. I love this stuff, but I guess it's akin to um, Clive Barker's Hellraiser, like the reaction to those type movies. Although I think I love the first Hellraiser. It's an excellent movie. I don't know if I look back, it's too good, but... Event Horizon, you can do a sequel to this movie. You could do uh, connections to it in different ways. I would love to see something done. Not a remake. Because you got characters that are still this age that could reprise certain roles. And the ending kind of um, leads you to something that could happen. Or you could see it. Event Horizon. Sci-fi horror. Great movie. Great actors in it, work well together. Uh, some of them just are so good in this. It's, uh, it's a shame that they don't, they're not super famous. Oh, maybe it's just my, I'm an idiot, but maybe people, uh, big fans and they follow them. But, you, you know, you see the cast and you go, oh, I know that person. I know, oh, I remember, I've seen him in stuff or her, that type of thing. But it doesn't, you know, it's like Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill, uh, the people you remember. But they do so good in this. All the actors, I think, really pull it off. You got these people in space. I think the year is like 2047 to give you an idea. And just uh, insanity, you know. You got to pull together the information about a massacre sort of thing. And like what happened to the crew. And what's this ship doing. And what's happening to the people who are trying to rescue them. 
watch it i recommend it give it a try i hope everybody is safe healthy until next time take care